Diana Steele is in the studio today to take your calls. Nice to see you. And you as well. And we have calls lined up already. Rob from Qualicum Beach is our first uh, caller today. Hi, Rob. Rob, How are you today? Hi, very well, thanks. What do you want to ask uh, Diana? Well, I'm just out, uh, wondering, you know, what's a safe amount of red meat to eat and uh, what foods are good to eat that will help me achieve a stronger erection? <laughs> was waiting for that, Rob. You need to get out more, my friend. You need to get a life. I'll definitely help you on today. the red meat one, though. <laughs> red meat, if you, you can know what? Let's, let's just skip. Yeah. Let's move on to Mark. Hi, Mark. I have to know the difference. We're trying to get out of our sugar in, in our dairy, and so we, we changed to unsweetened solely. What's the difference between unsweetened solely and 2%? Unsweetened so the, the difference in the sugar content? Is that what you're well, asking? Well, we know the sugar content, but sometimes we feel we're like we're getting a little bit fatter. <laughs> well, you know, there's not a whole lot of difference in, in terms of the calories for your uh, milk and your soy. They're similar in um, calories per cup. What you want to make sure is that you're not getting one that has a lot of sugar added or the sweetened ones, you know, the chocolate one, is not is going to be equivalent to your regular milk. But a 2% milk is the same sort of fat content as a soy milk. Soy milk is about 1.5% milk fat um, or fat. So um, not too different in that respect, but make sure you get one that's not sweetened with sugar. And just one or two cups in a or two cups in a day is great. If you're having two liters, then you're going to mm -hmm. have more calories than you need, and so then you might gain weight. But mm -hmm. that wouldn't be the cause of a weight gain. Okay, give us a call. The numbers are on your screen. If you have any nutrition questions for Diana, what about things like almond milk or rice milk or, or other alternatives to dairy? Yeah, there are lots of different things that we can have for our calcium sources, and soy milk would have been one. Mm -hmm. Almond milk, as long as it's fortified with calcium, can be a good option. Um, however, almond milk mm -hmm. isn't going to be as high in protein as milk and soy. So when you're looking as a and a nutritional equivalence, you're not going to get exactly the same thing. So you'd want to maybe have another source of protein at your breakfast if you're using almond milk in your cereal. So have some oh, okay. actual almonds, for example. Right. Rice milk also very low in protein, mm -hmm. um, so you're not going to feel as full. It's more of a carbohydrate drink, but they've added calcium to most of them. So as long as you're using it for the calcium source, then mm -hmm. that's great. It could be a good option. Right. And then there's another drink out there called Amore, which is a dairy milk that has almond milk mixed with it, oh, okay. and it's actually 50% higher in calcium than regular regular cow's milk. Hmm. So it can be a great way of getting some more calcium in your diet. Okay. Thanks very much for that call, Mark. Patrick is up next. Hi, Patrick. Hi. How are you? Very well, thanks. What's your I, question? Thanks for taking my call. Just a quick question to the nutritionist. My uh, wife makes smoothies every single day for breakfast, and she loads them up with fruit and bananas and chunks of apples, and she blends them all into everything else. Mm -hmm. I'm just wondering if the caloric intake of that smoothie is just the same as if she ate a breakfast with toast and eggs and, and a bit more fiber in it. Yeah, it's quite possible, and that's often the challenge that people are having these days when they're adding in all sorts of things like their um, flax seeds and their chia seeds and hemp hearts and protein powders in addition to having your banana and your yogurt and mm -hmm. um, then all the berries and fruit, and you know suddenly you're ending up with a whole liter's worth of a smoothie. That can be upwards of 1,000 calories. So really looking at, okay, I want to have one, two, or three servings maximum of fruit, and a serving is half a cup. If you're using a protein powder, no more than and about 20 grams of protein is necessary, so keeping it at that. And choose either the flax or the chia or the hemp hearts as an additive right. and having a tablespoon rather than having three tablespoons. And if you wanted to have a fiber in there as well. But change is also good. So, um, you know, if you're having the egg and toast, make sure you have fruit with it because that's one thing that you'd be missing out and it's very high in antioxidants to have that smoothie. Um, but, you know, having different breakfasts during the week is mm -hmm. a good idea. If you have the same thing all the time, you're going to get the same results. And if you're looking at changing um, weight, for example, change up your body, just like you, you cross-train with exercise, yeah. cross-train with too. your food, and yeah. you'll get bored. Yeah. Yeah. No, but I always, I, I'm always concerned about that because I throw yeah. everything into my smoothies and I'm thinking, I know we've talked about good. your smoothie yeah. before, but portion control. Yeah. Kathy's up next. Hi, Kathy. Hi. What's your question? Uh, my question is, uh, I retired a couple years ago and I'm back to work six months now part-time in shift work. And I've been gaining weight because the graveyard shift, I eat things to try to keep yourself awake because it's a long shift. And I'm wondering what, what I could be eating that would do the same thing but not have the weight gain. 
Yeah, it's a big challenge, certainly. You want to look at your overall eating when you have shift work as eat uh, light late at night. And so when you wake up, um, even if it's in the afternoon, you're going to have your first meal of the day, which will be your breakfast, but it might be lunch food, that's okay. And then try and eat every three or four hours for the rest of the time that you're awake and choosing to have lighter items when you're actually at work. We have fewer digestive enzymes in the evening when we're um, you know, up late at night, so you don't want to have a really heavy meal at that time so avoiding things like pizzas that might be ordered in and instead having the fruit smoothie or mm -hmm. um, yogurt and fruit and some granola and in smaller portions so you can have small snacks every two hours rather than having uh, larger meals and heavy yeah. foods and then sometimes having a breakfast just before you go to bed can be helpful and that way you'll sleep throughout the daytime better rather than waking up and being hungry yeah. mid sleep yeah organization helps too to keep the portions under control and just packing it always have snacks bags. Yeah. Helena is our final caller today. Hi there, Helena. Hi. What's your question? My question is, what foods besides oatmeal help to lower cholesterol? There are lots of great foods out there, but oatmeal, and for one, is because of the soluble fiber. And so also barley would be a good source of soluble fiber. But you can also look at things like soy protein. Getting 25 grams of soy protein per day has been shown to lower cholesterol levels. Eating more fruits and vegetables have antioxidants that help prevent the cholesterol from getting sticky and sticking to your blood vessels. Um, and also for soluble fiber, things like lentils and chickpeas and kidney beans, all those legumes. Um, bananas have soluble fiber, and so do apples, hence the apple a day. All right. Yeah. Thanks very much, Diana. You're welcome. Thank you for your calls today. If you would like to know more or you have other nutrition questions, you can contact Diana 604-739-3290. Her website is eatingforenergy.com and you can find her on Twitter at eatingforenergy.